Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyiati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu fala mudilla la wa man yudlil fala hadiya la. Asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika la. Wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Uusikum wa iyaya awalan bittaqullah Faqad fazal muttaqun Dear brothers and sisters, welcome Back to Ilm Submit Dubai, organized by Al-Manar International Alhamdulillah It is really a nikmah again That we are able to continue Seeking the knowledge of Allah Rabbul Alameen Continue be guided by Allah Rabbul Alameen's book, the Qur'an and the Sunnah. I will be sharing with you a very important lesson about leaders. Yeah? About leaders guided by the Qur'an and Sunnah. Leadership. We are talking about leadership. We all are aware. When you talk about leadership, you are talking about Amir, Imam. Now, Allah Rabbul Alameen who left us, remind us from the beginning that we are not just anybody. We are the best. Kundum Khaira Ummah. You are the best nation. Why are we the best nation? Because we are good leaders. We are leader through example. We are leader who are guided by our faith and belief. Now this is a very important lesson for all of us. There are many leaders before Islam. The Rome have the empire, yeah. The Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, everybody have their own leader. King, emperors. King and emperors is everywhere. There's no democracy at that time. It's about king or emperor. But you can see in history, one by one, all these leaders collapse. One by one. But still there are some kingdoms still exist. It's because that kingdom is guided by their faith and their belief. When there's no faith and no belief, that means we are playing God. We thought that we have all the power, we can do anything we want. We can destroy anything that we don't like. And that is the cause of our own destruction. Allah Almighty remind us in Surah Al-Baqarah, verses 257. بعد الأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور. This is a sign of leader according to the Islamic principle that every Muslim leader must be guided by his faith and iman. Allah is the protector of those who have faith, who have iman. When you are connected to Allah, you become a believer and your leadership is guided by Iman, then Allah will be your protector. Allahu Akbar. Who is the best protector for us other than Allah? Then Allah is going to bring you out from the depth of darkness to the nur to light. From being an oppressor, arrogant to be humble, simple, and to be a good leader. 
But all good leader actually start and begin from being a good follower. No one was born as a leader. All of us are born and we are children, baby. We know nothing about leadership. We just follow. But if you become a good follower, later on you see the result. If you follow the good people, you become a good person. If there's a good leader at home, then you see you become a good husband and a good father. Or a good wife and a good mother because there is an example, good example for you to follow. But the fitra of human, everybody when they reach at certain age, they want, they dream to be a leader. And everybody was given the opportunity to be a leader. This is the beauty of Islam. That the Prophet said, Everyone, every single person of us are a leader and you'll be responsible to your leadership. Meaning everyone is responsible at least to lead themselves. And if you want to be a good leader, you make sure that your leadership is guided by Iman, faith. Now how can you know that your leadership is guided by by your iman, by your faith. You know, in our country, in Malaysia, we have been very blessed because one of the first pillars of the constitution in our country, the Rukun Nagara, is belief in God. Kepercayaan kepada Tuhan in the Malay language. Meaning to be a leader in the country, you must have faith. Then you will develop a nation who believe. If the leader has no belief, a godless leader, then you know the ending is you are going to develop a godless nation. And that is very dangerous. Because when there's no guidance, you'll be guided by your nafs, your desire. And you're going to cause a loss of destruction that you don't even are aware now. You don't know. You thought that it's a good thing for you to do. Now it's based on your feeling and knowledge, not guidance. And we human, we know that we are weak by our own fitra, nature. We can be easily influenced by the environment. But the leader who is guided by his faith, Allahu Akbar. Meaning the leader have a SOP to follow. Even leader have to follow certain guidelines. It's not up to you, no. And who is more knowledgeable than Almighty, the Creator who created all of us and who won the best for us and who have said that I have chosen Adam and the descendant of Adam as Khalifa to be the leader on planet Earth. Because when the believer is the one who is leading, you will see there are lots of justice, fairness, yeah? goodness to everybody. Because when you are guided by your faith, by the belief, the belief always wants you to be good, be kind, be just to one another. Not just thinking about yourself, no. But you are here to lead others. So leadership guided by the Quran and Sunnah. Allah said in Surah Nisa, 
بعد العنز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أتى الله وأتى الرسول أولي الأمر منكم فإن تنازقتم في شيء فردوه إلى الله ورسول إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله ويوم الآخر ذلك خير وأحسن تقويلا Now Allah is telling us Oh you believe is start with belief you see He's talking to the believer That means if you want to be a good leader your leader ship must be guided by your belief Obey Allah Obey the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam And Also obey those who are higher than you in authority. Because leadership in Islam have many levels. You yourself as a leader to yourself. Always make sure that you lead yourself to something that is good, not something is bad. Guided by iman. And then in the house you have your parent. Your parent is the leader for you to follow. The wife have a leader to follow is the husband, and when you go to the office, you follow the rule of your leader in the office, the employer, or your senior, or your manager, or your CEO. You just name it. In the district, you have the district officer. You have somebody who is in charge. In the hospital, everywhere you go. There is somebody who is given a higher authority than you. So it start from you, as a person. Kulukum ra'in, kulukum ra, masulun an ra'iyate. So be a good leader to yourself. Of course, you want the best for you. You must give the best now. And when you are guided, how do you know that you are guided, brother and sister? Fa in tanazaktum fi shayin. فردوه إلى الله ورسول إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله ويوم الآخر ذلك خير وأحسن تقويلا. Whether we want to know or whether we are aware or not that we are a believer leader or a leader who believe in what they believe is guided or not. When he faced any problem, then the way he solved the problem, he go back to Allah and the prophets' guidance, because he know Allah is the best protector. Allah want the best for everybody. Allah appointed us to be a leader; it's a gift actually. When Allah appoint us to be a leader, that everybody will support us, and now we become a leader. Then, if you are not guided by him, you see, you become a bad leader, and people will be very unhappy. Then they want you to step down because you are not fit to be the leader. And this is very important. Sometimes those who are power crazy, they just want to be a leader. They don't care how weak they are. They just want to be a leader. And a good leader is very responsible to Allah. Any problem he encounter in the community under his leadership, he go back to the book of Allah. And he will also follow the way of the Prophet, because the Prophet is the best leader. Then Allah said again, "In kuntum tu'minuna billahi yom al akhir." If you claim that you are a believer. Today, a lot of leaders, Alhamdulillah, they are still Muslim. But are they a true believer? Wallahu a'lam. If he they claim that I am a believer, then they must show their leadership by guiding us with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. Then you can say, I am a good leader. And Allah also remind us, and those who answer the call of Allah, who respond to Allah, 
and worship him alone. Of course, a good leader also must be a good worshiper. If a leader is not connected to Allah, you see the Prophet, he is the leader of his community and he is the Imam in the Salah. He lead the people in the prayer, spiritual leader and also a leader in this life. Leader here and the hereafter. Allahu Akbar. But most of our leader today fail to be an imam. But nothing is too late. We have seen like Turkey, Alhamdulillah, the imam, the leader, he can read Quran beautifully. He can lead people in the prayer. Of course, it's not that you must lead them everywhere you go. No. You can also empower other people to lead the prayer. But he must be able to lead the people in their prayer. He must be able to give khutbah, Jumu'ah. Khutbah, Eid al-Fitri and Eid al-Adha, like how our Prophet shown us his leadership. And how Abu Bakr, the first Khalif of the Prophet, after the Prophet passed away, how Omar ibn Khattab, how Osman and Ali, Allahu Akbar, these are the righteous Khalif. If you follow this leadership, you will never go wrong. Allahu Akbar. Walillahilham. So, brothers and sisters, leadership in Islam is about how to connect yourself with Allah first. And a good leader also is guided by another ayah that is in Surah Surah, verses 38. And those who answer the call of their Lord and to worship none but Allah alone and perform their prayers and who conduct their affairs in my mutual consultation. Surah Bainahum. Amruhum Surah Bainahum. Meaning a good leader is not a leader who just thinks that everything he says is right, but he likes to have a committee of advisors. He have a group of counselor. He like to consult with his shura committee. He must have good environment, good yeah, supporter. The prophet called this kind of group something Hawariun. That he said that before a prophet was sent, Allah prepared for them a group of loyal, sincere, committed followers. Sahaba, known as our Prophet, as Sahaba, his righteous companion, who is there to sit down and discuss among themselves because we know a leader cannot look into everything by himself. He needs good companion, good consultation from a selected committee who is specialized in different, different area about health, economy, about security, safety, about yeah, trading or anything you need for a country. So they must have a very loyal, committed, sincere group of people that a good leadership always consult this group of people so that the decision that they decide is collectively. Of course, when you want to do a shura, a meeting, when you want to go for consultation, you must have a leader, an amir, to lead the shura, the discussion. You cannot just, uh, everybody become an amir. No, there will be a leader, a amir, or they known as a chairperson, who will chair the meeting and have an open discussion. Now, when you talk about discussion, again, brother, there's an adapt. 
Consultation means you are coming into a discussion with an open mind, not a closed mind, my way, all my way. Listen to me. All just have to listen. No. You must come in with an open mind. Then only you can consider that is a meeting. There is a shura. There is a consultation. If just come and get my order, that means there's no consultation anymore. So a good leader is who follow Quran Sunnah, the guidelines of Quran Sunnah. He will get all the expertise. You know, because Allah said, "Fasalu ali zikri in kuntum la ta'lamun." You cannot be expert in all angle. No, you have no time to look into all areas. So everybody have their own kulu yamalu ala shakilati. Allah said, everyone is given a special skill, a special task. So everybody will have their specialities. So a good leader will get all and get all this info, get them into the committee. And now he chat the meeting. Then with an open mind, he will ask them. Now today we have one issue, or we want to do this development, or we are talking about health example. Now he get all these people around, and then he will ask them, "What is your opinion? Maybe you have some yeah, suggestion, proposal." So everybody will give their. Everybody have their role. The health department will look for the health approach. The security department will look how to also help them by tighten the security to make sure that everything is under control. The development, the economy will look into that too. Everybody have their role to complement one another. Allahu Akbar, so beautiful. That is according to the leadership in Islam. A leadership in Islam is not a person very arrogant, thinking that he knows everything. No, he's a very humble person. Even our Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, who received direct revelation from Allah, guided by Allah, he also show us this example. He have a group of his companion, righteous companion, that he always consult with them. In battle, when you want to go to war, is that good for us to go to war? Is that good for us to defend ourselves sometimes, or just have more patience, hold on, or we have to be offensive or defensive? All this you must look into it. You remember, there was a time in the time of Solomon, King Solomon, Prophet Sulaiman. You now, when the bird hood hood came. Yeah, he was missing for one. Came back and he's saying, "If I see Hud Hud, if he don't give me a good explanation why he is absent, I'm going to punish him." Then Hud Hud is telling Solomon that he was in a place called Seba. He saw a kingdom led by a woman, very powerful, but they don't believe in the true God, Allah. They may worship the sun and the moon. So Solomon start to negotiate with them, and even the queen, Queen of Sheba, known to us in the history, she's a very humble queen, a very powerful kingdom at that time. She asked her advisor, a group of what do you think? I receive a letter from Solomon. Telling us to believe in Allah or not, Solomon is going to come with his army, and there will be war now. Then the people give him advice. You know, I think we are stronger than anybody. So far, we know that we have a very strong army. We are a strong empire. But she was a very wise woman. She said, "If we engage in war of loss, there's a lot of people will suffer destruction on our environment, killing. War, of course, we end with killing. So why not we just negotiate and give him you know, some gift, 
And that's how they start. They need to negotiate. This is just a humble example. So it's good to have the meeting, but at the end of the meeting, one thing I'd like to share with all the good brothers and sisters, if you want to conduct an Islamic shura, you must remember there must be a chairperson. And then when you are given the opportunity to propose, to give an opinion, you speak up if you have some good idea. If no, you said no comment, pass it to the second person. And if the second person says something, we all listen together first. The third one will come, the fourth, then nobody can say, oh, the fourth came, I think my way is better, I disagree with the second person. No, 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 you are not there to disagree with anybody. You are there to give up some opinion, share your opinion, propose anything you think that you know through your experience, through your knowledge. You're not here to disagree with other people because there's no, yeah, what? No decision made yet. There's nothing to agree or disagree. Just share your opinion and your expertise. So that everybody will feel good at the end of the day because we are not uh, against one another. I disagree with you. It's not like today, you see, in the meeting or the parliament, Team A will say another, the other team will go against Team A. What kind of nonsense is this? Is here, you are here to compliment, remind each other with beautiful conduct, manners. Not to show, yeah, you're arrogant and judging people, accuse people, cursing one another. When you do that, what happens when people curse you back? We show bad example. If the higher level of the country is so bad in their manner, how can you expect the lower people, the public, to be good? Meaning we have failed to appoint good people to represent us. We have represent, we have appointed people who have no manners, arrogant, to represent us. Their sound, they show their color. No other, no manners when they talk to one another. When people say, okay, wait for a while, let the other people speak, they keep on talking, no manners. Astaghfirullah At the end, the chairperson have to make addition. A good leader, he will look into this discussion today is about what? About security. Then whatever comes from the security side, he will value more than just from other side because other people, they are not specialized in that area. Then of course, when he decides something, then everybody must work together, complement one another. It's not like, oh, now it's up to him, his division, his department. No, no, no. One is being decided. Every department work together as one team, move together. Then you see that leadership will lead everybody into peace, unity, because we have done our part. And when we have done our part, we do what is the best, guided by our faith again, the Quran and the Sunnah, everything so. Because there's no personal gain here. Everybody is here to represent everyone, for the country, for the nation, not like today, everybody is coming just to represent themselves and their own group of people. Yeah. But in Islam, the leadership is very different. Look at the leadership, the Prophet, how humble he is. Allahu Akbar. Remember, simplicity is very important in the leadership. And that's why the Prophet said, Inna al bazazata min al iman. Simplicity is not just the way you talk, the way you be, the way you dress also can be very simple. Yeah, you don't have to, because I'm a leader now, so my dressing is also the dressing of a leader. No, just dress like a normal people. You can be like normal, you know. And in the time the Prophet, you see sometimes when he walk, he can just walk with one or two people beside him. He don't have all the special bodyguard 
Today we need to have this bodyguard because there are a lot of bad guys around us. No problem. But be easy. Remember what the prophet said. If you have this four character to be a leadership, then not only you will be protected here, even you will be protected from hellfire. There is layinun, hayinun, karib, sahlun. Be gentle, polite, humble, easy to approach. Now, all these things, and you are easy to approach. Anybody can come to see you, no problem. There's not a lot of protocol here and there. But today you need all this protocol. Why? Because of the security. Fair enough, no problem. But be simple. A good leadership is a person who do not show extravagant. No, they are humble. See the lifestyle of the prophet. The way he lived, very simple. The way he eat, he eat like a servant of Allah. He just want to serve and serve for the sake of Allah and serve the ummah, not for himself. Not like today, a lot of the people who want to be a leader, they just want to serve themselves more than others. So they fail to be a good leader. A good leader is a person who is here to represent everybody, not his own interest. His own interest will be the last for him. Of course, we need also to be fair to our leader. The leader has the thing of so many things. Yeah? And he also has family to take care. Your time in time of Omar, when he appoint a representative to be a leader in a district, in an area, in a, a town, or in a village, or in a city, people, most of them just are not ready to accept any leadership appointed by Omar. Why? Because he is a very strict Khalifa. He makes sure that all leaders know their role and go down, go down to the ground, reach out to the people, understand their problem, put their problem ahead of your problem. And some leader, example, if before they become a leader, just an example, they have five million dollars, their property. He made sure that at the end of his leadership, he still have five million. The rest is taken care by the country. Yeah? The rest will be taken care by the government who is ruling. He'll give you a good salary, but you must not be corrupt. You must remember, leadership is amana, is a trust from Allah. And amana lead to iman. Again, guided by iman. The Prophet said, "La tatkulu jannah hatta tu'minu." None of you can go to paradise without iman. So how can you be a good leader if you are not leading the ummah to jannah? You are leading them to hell. How can you be a good leader if you are bringing the people to destruction? You must save them. Like what Allah said, Ya ayuhal lazina amanu, O you who biliku anfusakum, wa ahlikum, naro, naro. O you who believe, remember, leadership must be guided by his belief. Save your soul. After you save yourself, save your family. Yeah, in the time of Omar, there are a lot of governors, they appointed, who Sometimes was absent, yeah? have no time for the public. So the public complained. And then Omar was making a follow-up to see why. Why the public is complaining about my representative. And he found him not in the office. Where he found him? In the marketplace. So he went. Called him, what are you doing here? But this governor, 
a representative leader, a very responsible leader. He said, I also, as a human, I have family to take care. I don't have enough. I have to find some work. I have to do some business to bring your food for my family. Senator so Omar said, I will give you a very fair salary, enough for you and your family, so that you don't have to think of that. So when you are a leader, you lead to example. So that you like a father, mother figure to take care of the children. All the people under you is like your children. So normally parents, they work hard for the children. When the children are okay, alhamdulillah, they are okay. And that's how a leadership is. And alhamdulillah, if those who caught involved in any corruption, gone case. They cannot be a leader anymore. It will cause destruction for the family, for that person. That person will destroy himself. That's why Allah said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَقَّاهَا وَقَدْ قَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Who are the successful person? The successful person is a person who keeps himself pure, guided by the Quran and Sunnah. Remember, when you are guided by the Quran and Sunnah, brother and sister, you are not going guided by other info. A lot of leaders today, they look for leadership through other area, through other channel. They forget to go back to what Allah said and what the Prophet said. When you follow other than Allah and the Prophet, you cannot be a good leader. You just have more problems you will create more problem and more problem. But when you are guided, nobody can say, you are wrong because you are following the guidance. And when you follow what Allah wants you to do, you say, everybody will know that, oh, this is not from you, it's from God. Khalas, no comment. Until they have problem, if they don't believe in God, I don't believe in that. But still, if you look back, everything that Allah wants us to do is fair and square. Nobody is above law. And that leadership that is guided by the Islamic ruling, the Islamic rule is called hudud. Hudud means everything, there is a limit, even the freedom of speech, freedom of do anything, is there is a limit for everything. And it's proven when the people follow the divine law, not man-made law as a leader. At the end, everybody win, everybody benefit. Security, Allahu Akbar. Hardly you can see people steal, people rob, cause harm to other people. They know if they are caught doing that and they are found guilty, the severe punishment will come after that. If they don't show mercy to the needy, to the poor, to the elder, they rob them, they cause harm to them, their hand can be cut. Khalas. You only become so yeah, arrogant and so harmful when you have this hand. They'll cut your hand. Because you have no right to cause harm to others. You are here to help one another. You want something, work for it. Not rob and steal. So country who have this law, you can see, yeah? You can say that crime rate is very minimum. I've seen country who have this reinforcement just following the divine law. Business people, they just take one cover and cover. They don't even lock their office or their, their shop and then they go and pray. Nobody there to steal. Children 15, 17 years old will bring a bag of money going to the bank. Nobody dare to rob him because when you do that, when he scream, you are gone. And the law is very severe. Example, people do not want, people dare not even get into that kind of activities, stealing or robbing. You know, today, when we don't follow the leadership is not being guided by their faith, just by their feeling, their desire. We cause a lot of uncertainty. Yeah. We 
cause a lot of unrest. People don't feel safe. People kidnap. People rob. People steal, because the leadership is not guided by their faith. And this is very important. Kat ablahan manzakaha. Those who are successful are those who keep themselves pure, not corrupted. Wa kat kaba manzakaha. And Allah said, you will fail yourself when you allow yourself to be corrupted. In the beginning, nobody want to be corrupted. Everybody will take up a leadership with full of amana trust. That's why there is a promise made that I will hold to this amana and try my best to do the level that I can think that is made and trust to me. There is good sign. And then if you have amana, you have iman. You have iman, you go to Jannah. La iman diman la amana. Remember the Prophet said, when there is no amana, there is no iman. You don't talk about faith anymore. When you cannot prove to yourself that you are a trusty person. That you can be trusted in whatever assignment given to you. This is very, very important for a leadership in Islam. If you are not ready yet, that means you don't accept that post. Like in the time of Omar, a lot of people who are not ready, they can't. They say, no, no. Thank you for your offer. You know, because we do not want to be unjust to ourselves and unjust to other people. Because when you allow yourself, sometimes we are not corrupted. We know that. We are all good people. But the environment can corrupt you. Power can corrupt. And one of the best things, Allahu Akbar, that Omar have laid out. Look at the good caliph being honored, respected by the Roman Empire, by the, by the Persian Empire. These two great empires fall in the time of Omar. He's a very simple man. When he was going into Jerusalem, people was waiting for his... Uh, Protocol to come with red carpet and all this bodyguard. He just came like a normal slave of Allah. You know? And his dress is so simple. Got patches here and there. Caught people by surprise. They thought that this great leader, Khalif of the Muslim, who have, you know, Alhamdulillah, all the empire of Rome, Persia, fall at that time. You know? But then he came like normal people, more than a normal people, very simple dressing with patches. He can have dress like a king and walk like a king with all the guards and so on. But no, he don't need that. Himself is very strong as a person. You know, Omar, who knows, who do not know Omar, he's like the lion. Yeah, to the people, no. But then, the way he come in to Jerusalem is like normal people, no special God. Yeah, and also the way he dressed, and that opened the heart of the people in Jerusalem. That this is a leader, a great leader. He is so powerful, known to the Arabs, the Persian, and the Roman Empire. But look at him. The way he dressed. And sometimes he just sleep where? He sleep in the mosque. And he also is an imam. He give khutbah. He give khutbah in Eid prayer, in Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fitri, Allahu Akbar. And everybody can just approach him. Allahu Akbar walillahi alham. But of course, when you want to make sure that your leadership is protected with all the security that you need to protect, it's not, pro it's not a problem. You can do that if you think you need. But you yourself as a leader must learn how to be humble, reach out to others. Because it's easy for a leader to go and reach out to the public, then the public come to you. And you must remember, a good leader always have good community followers, ministers, advisors, 
who is not corrupted again. Because sometimes you are good, but the people surround you are corrupted. So they will make use of your name because you don't have time to go out and talk to the people and listen to everybody or go through all these, you know, different, different department, ministry. So a good leader will always come down to the ground. Like if they give khutbah, anybody can approach him. Of course, you can have some security to check whether this person, yeah, can bring harm to the leader, then they can talk to the leader. A good leader, brother and sister, also very important. Leadership guided by the Quran and Sunnah, meaning a good leader is guided by good character, behavior. And a good leader, also a good listener. They do not just give instruction, order, command, but they also listen. They want to know. They know what the people is facing, what problem they are encountering. They want to know. So that when they have a meeting among the Shura committee, the committee, then he know what is going on. He have the info. So a good leader is a good leader who select good representative, to be his advisor, to be his eye, to be his ear, to be his mouth. When the people go out, they only talk what is good. And when they send the message back to the leader, they do not manipulate and try to create fitna. They only send what is good. What is wrong, they also tell the leader that this something is very wrong in this area. We have to look into this seriously. That means the good uh, leader appoint good representative, a good counselor who will be very active in going to the ground and get good information and report it back to the good leader. And then they will find the best way to solve the problem, guided by their faith. They do this because of Allah Rabbul Alameen. No hidden agenda. Then you see, this leader will be loved by his people. Like how the people love the Prophet. And people don't understand. They love toward the Prophet until today. Allah, people just don't understand. When some people who abuse our Prophet, you see what happened? The Muslim, they are prepared to die for his Messenger, his prophet. They don't allow anybody to abuse the prophet because he is the best leader for all of us. Who is there for us, who pray for us, who think for us, who do not only pray, Oh Allah, give me Jannah. Oh Allah, save my Ummah, save my Ummah. Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine, brother and sister, that the prophet, when he was talking to the companion, he said, Mata al -ka, when can I meet my family? So the companion asked, Am, are, are we not your family? You are my companion. My family that will come are those who believe in me, follow my teaching, and they don't even see me. That means the prophet has passed away. I always we don't see the prophet, but we follow his teaching. We believe in him. And he pray for us. Allahu Akbar. So brother and sister, let us be humble. Please, whoever is going to be a leader, either in a company, at home, as a husband, as a father, as a boss, just make sure you are guided by the Quran and Sunnah. With Iman, you will never fail yourself. And inshallah, with the will of Allah, your children become good leader. Your grandchildren become good leader. All of them, follow the same guidance, the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad that will never turn us astray. The Prophet reminds us in Khutbah Wida, whoever follow this to the Qur'an Sunnah and hold fast to it, nobody can turn you astray. Nothing can corrupt you because you know Allah is the Razak, He is the provider. When He provides for you, 
You don't need anything more than that. Even little, but blessing is better than you have more haram, but no blessing. Let us try our best. If you still are not sure about what we are sharing with you, please be humble. A good leader must have good advice. Get a good scholar to be your advice, close to you, because a scholar will not have any hidden agenda except to make sure that he will give you the best advice and show you the best way, the way of Allah and the Prophet to be a good leader. May Allah bless all of us and bless whoever is a leader in any matters. Please, I advise all of you, there's nothing that you will waste or lose by appoint a good scholar to be a good, your advisor, personal advisor. You have a lot of PA here, PA there. Well, you must have a good scholar to be your personal advisor to make sure that he will always remind you about your iman. How to be a good leader guided by our faith, Islam. May Allah bless us. May Allah protect our leader wherever they are and make them good leader. And for those who don't know, please remember, seek knowledge. When I say knowledge, is what Allah said, what Prophet said. So there is pure knowledge, not corrupted knowledge. Human knowledge, there's a lot of hidden agenda. For Allah, Prophet, everything is open and transparent. There is pure knowledge. Don't be arrogant. You are up there today, tomorrow you are nowhere. You want to be up and you want to be honored not only when you're in office, even after you pass away, people remember you, people love you. Like our Prophet and the four Caliph are all the good leaders. May Allah bless us, protect our country, our leader, and may the leader help the nation to and guide the nation so that all of us will end happy this world and hasana in akhirah. Lastly, again, I have to emphasize, anybody who wants to be a good leader, a successful businessman, anyone, please be wise. Appoint a good scholar to be your advisor. A good scholar will advise you guided by the Quran and Sunnah. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته